Well, good morning, Friday morning, and it's my joy to share with you the final stepping stone on our journey of love compels. We've looked at that whole subject of how that love of God gets in us and begins to flow through us and how it awakens our heart to pray and then puts a spring in our step so that we're ready to go speak to people, come and see the goodness of God. So today, Friday, I want to speak about, I love my city, I love my nation. You know, I remember when we moved to Oxford and we first came here. At first I felt quite disconnected. We had traveled so many nations of the world. We had just moved from Watford, which had been a place that I had known and was very familiar with. And I remember walking through the streets of Oxford, feeling a little bit disconnected and asking God, God, how do you touch a city? How can we make any influence? This city seems so influential. Everyone seems to know everything. What are we going to do? And I just found myself beginning to pray again and again for Oxford. And it was so funny. I was just about to cross the road and in front of me, this bus pulled out. And on the back of the bus, it says, I love my city, Oxford. And suddenly I found tears welled up in me. And I said, God, it is true. I love this city, Oxford. I want to make a difference. Help me be the story. Help me craft a language. How? How? And I realised that as I had spent time letting God touch my heart for this new neighbourhood, this new community, I could feel his love, his compassion, but I still felt totally inadequate. And in that moment, I felt God give me a key. And he said, Rachel, this is how you love a city. This is how you love a nation. You love it one face at a time. Just walk a little bit more slowly down the street and look at the faces. Begin to see what I see, feel what I feel. Can you feel the cry of this city? Rachel, you're never going to stand and touch the whole city at once. But Rachel, you can change this city one face at a time. And so as we balance that place of prayer where we feel the heart of God with a willingness to go and make a difference, you will be amazed at the incredible timing of God, how amazing he is at just positioning you in the right place at the right time next to the right person. You suddenly will be next to someone in the supermarket or in the coffee line or in the bathroom at the workplace and you think, oh, that's the second time I've seen you this week. What's your story? And suddenly, as we position ourselves to be ready to go, God positions us to be ready to speak. We're compelled by love. We're now ready to go. So how do we use these opportunities? I want to give you two keys that I've really learned. Number one, recognise the moments. Recognise those God setups. You see, I've often thought coincidences are God appointments. If I meet someone two or three times down the shop in a couple of weeks, I said, oh, I've seen you quite a few times. What's your name? Who are you? And I make that a bridge of opportunity. So recognise your moments. You see, I believe in this season, God wants to stir up a new expectation in you that you're ready to go and that his word is in you. And you do have a story and a message of hope. You are able to say, come and see. Matthew 10 verse 7 puts it like this. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. And so you, as you go out, you need to realise, I'm pressed into the presence of God. Now because of me, heaven can be closer to people around me. So how do you know your opportunities? Learn to watch people. You can just see those hesitations, sometimes the fear, the trauma, and just be ready to engage. Maybe you can see that they're very flustered or something, struggling, and you can see that as an opportunity. Recognise those opportunities to just introduce yourself. If you start a conversation with someone, 
don't just listen to their words, listen to their heart too. Because someone can say, how are you doing then? Oh, I'm fine. But you can hear the slight hesitation, say, really? You don't look or sound quite as happy as you usually do. Yeah, actually, it's been a bit tough. You see, Gordon and I had a wonderful chocolate Labrador Dibley, so we got to know our area. We've lived here for 15 years now because of dog walking. And again, again, you say, hi, Joe, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great, it's good. And sometimes it was like, uh, yeah, it's okay. Oh, Joe, what's on? You see, learn to listen to the heart, not just the words. And then in that moment, listen upward before you speak outward. Just say, okay, God, what's my next question? Remember yesterday, we looked at the woman at the well. And I think one of the incredible gifts of Jesus was his expertise to ask the right question to open up a conversation. So listen upward. Do I need to ask a question? What question do I need to ask? And I think it's always important. Use easy, friendly, accessible language. You know, people don't really understand if we say, oh, sorry, mate, you need to go and pray about that because God needs to deal with that. You know, they're not going to understand our spiritual language, but we can still take spiritual principles and values and put them in everyday language and help people understand. But we do need to be prepared to even step out and pray. I've often had people, maybe when walking dogs say, you know, could you throw up one for me because my daughter's really struggling? Or could you throw up a prayer for me about this? And often I'll say, you know what, I'm scared I might forget after this conversation. So what I'd really love to do is I just wondered if we could just stand together for a second and pray right now. People might be slightly awkward, but if you pray in a very easy, accessible language, I usually find people are tearful. They've taken my hands and said, oh, Rachel, thank you so much. That means so much. So be prepared to release power and then have an expectation of harvest. If you've sowed some seed, expect something to grow. And I just believe, as I have learnt this journey, as someone who is fairly reluctant and quite shy about talking about God, always feeling I'd get it wrong, it's amazing how when you lean into that love of God, that love will position you in the right place. And just remember, you can have loads of conversations. Usually, we're not going to meet that person once. We don't have to have the whole conversation of they're sinners, they're going to die, and da da da, da all in five minutes. You know, as I said, I've lived here 15 years. And so it's been line on line, conversation on conversation, illustration on illustration, just sowing little seed thoughts. And suddenly they come together to create the next level of opportunity. So don't be in too much of a rush. Don't force feed people, but just be ready to recognise your opportunity and tell your story. John chapter 4 verse 34 to 37 says it like this. This is Jesus. My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do not say four more months and then the harvest, I tell you, open your eyes and look, for they are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages, even now he harvests a crop for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper go gladly together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps. And so I want you just to open your eyes and see that people around us, especially at this time, coming out of lockdown, they're being tenderised, they're being confronted, they're ready for conversations. I'm sure you found the same. People want to talk. Oh, we've been locked down and it's easy. Just take time for conversations. Don't say four more months. Right now, I believe, as we begin to reach out, people are ready to talk. So that's the first thing. Recognise the moment. Recognise the harvest. People want to talk. The second thing is then release the word. You know, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 to 10 says this. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and it is in 
your heart. That is the word of faith that we are proclaiming. You know, we've got to come to confidence in this year of pay, the near of the mouth, that God has put seed in our mouth and that seed will spring up. There is a sowing time and people are hungry. They're like little birds. Ah, 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 put food in my mouth. And we've got to tell the stories. Ask God when you're out, what is the come and see story I need to tell? I often have just done that. Um, we've got some, one of the people who lives in our area is a paramedic. And so I was telling him a story of one of my friends who works in accident and emergency in Northern Ireland and how this porter had prayed for a man in his 70s who was struggling with COVID and thought he would die. And this boy, 18, just the hospital porter, had felt to pray for him. And this man the next day was off all his ventilators, etc., and then within a few days discharged and at home and his life totally turned around. We need to just tell the good hope stories. The word is in our mouth. Ask God when you're out there, look up and say, God, what is the word you're putting in my mouth for this person today? What is the scripture? What's the thought? What's the story? You see, God wants to break all the shame and humiliation. For me, so often I didn't speak because I remembered at school being mocked, ridiculed a bit by my teachers. Oh, shut up, Rachel. I can't believe you talk like this. Can't believe you say that. So for me, breaking that sound barrier always took a bit of courage. I felt intimidated. I was frightened I'd be ridiculed. But I really believe God has put a word in our mouth. Psalm 107 verse 20 says, And he sent forth his word and he healed them. And he rescued them from the grave. You see, God has put a word in your mouth that is going to bring salvation. It's going to bring hope. It's going to bring change. I believe that just like Jesus, we need to take time to touch the one. If you read the story of the Gospels, Jesus, he touched people one by one by one. And the world changed. We read in Matthew chapter 8, 15, and Jesus touched her and the fever left and she got up. We read in Mark chapter 6, and wherever Jesus went into the villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick before him and begged him, let us touch the hem of your cloak. And all who touched Jesus were healed. You see, let people touch the Jesus in you. Just touch the one see the one don't say four more months no right here jesus says in john chapter 12 verse 32 and when i am lifted up from the earth jesus will draw all people to himself i believe this is a time to not be ashamed of jesus it's a time to lift up that name of jesus let him be seen let his story be heard and as we do that in our city and as we do that in our nation we're going to take back the high ground from the enemy. We're going to take back and show Jesus is alive. Jesus is well. Jesus touches people. Jesus transforms lives. Joshua chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 says this. And we will use these stones to build a memorial. And in the future your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? And you can say to them, these remind us of the Jordan when the river stopped and the Ark of the Covenant went across. These stones stand as a memorial amongst the people forever. You see, we're having a lot of conversations about statues and memorials at the moment. But I believe we need to build those Jesus statues. And people say, what happened here? What happened to you? Well, Jesus touched me. A miracle happened here. Lives were turned around. We need to create those stories of memorial so that our children will know God is alive at this time. Come on, how are we going to change our city? How are we going to change our world? How are we going to influence generations? How are we going to write the stories? One person at a time. Touch them one by one. 
Jesus touched them one by one and we will lift up his name. Let me pray for you. Father, today we thank you that you're going to teach us to love the one. Father, I thank you that we're going to recognise our moments. We're going to know your word is in our mouth and we are so grateful that we can speak. We can lift up that name of Jesus. We can have those memorial places where children say, what happened to you? We can say, well, that's where someone got healed of their leg. That's where people were raised from the dead. That's where there was an incredible, miraculous supervision and miracles of feeding people who were hungry and poor. That's where a man was raised up who suddenly had such an entrepreneurial idea that he, God gave us so much money. I believe, Father, that we, as we lift Jesus up, you're going to change our history and write a new story. Come on, just give your life to God again. Father, bless our mouths, and I pray we will be those who are compelled by love in this season. Amen. Well, I hope you felt my passion. I really do believe these are days that we'll carry a story. Tomorrow, Saturday, Helen's going to be with you and talk about just mission, how we carry this heart of mission for the lost. And then on Sunday, Gordon's going to be with us and he's going to take the next week, but on Sunday, he's going to talk to us about awakening the leaders within us. So join us this weekend, Helen tomorrow, Gordon on Sunday. God really bless you. Remember, his love compels us.